Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about collection of blood. Uh, by this video we will begin the series of practical hematology. So we are going to the first and the foremost topic that is the collection of blood. Now collection of blood can be done from the skin puncture, it can be done from the venous blood collection. Let's begin with the skin puncture. Now this method is most commonly used in infants and in small children as the veins they are not easily palpable in them or in adults if the blood required is very small then we will use this method. Now the blood which is obtained by skin puncture is the capillary blood and its composition is slightly different from the venous blood which we will discuss on later. Now uh, how we obtain it is in adults we obtain it from the either the side of the ring finger or the middle finger. We will obtain from that or uh, rarely in some cases ear lobe can also be used. However, in infants the preferred location is heel. You can see it is heel. We will obtain it from the plantar surface either the median or the lateral surface both are preferable or sometimes we can also take it from the great toe. Now, going to uh, in which situations, in which procedures it is helpful. It is helpful in, uh, it can, we can do cell counts from here, we can do hemoglobin, we can also estimate the blood group from this. Uh, then we can also use uh, to determine the PCV, the hematocrit, by the micro method because the blood obtained here, uh, the blood needed in this method is very less and it uh, it can be, uh, uh, the capillary blood can be used over here. Then preparation of the blood films as you all guys do in the practical labs. The preparation of the blood films is done by this. Now going to the method. What is the method? Method is firstly the puncture site is, is cleaned by ethanol and uh, after drying, uh, the uh, ethanol, the puncture uh, is made by a lancet. The lancet should be sterile, should be dry and disposable lancet is used. And the puncture should be deep uh, so as it should allow the free flow of the blood. We should not squeeze the finger. Uh, the free flow of the blood should be there. Now the first drop of the blood it is wiped off and uh, then the next drops they are collected. And lastly, we will put some sterile uh, cotton uh, to the puncture site so that the uh, bleeding stops. Now, going to the some pointers which are uh, important in case of uh, capillary blood, that is the skin puncture. First, the excessive squeezing should not be done because it will dilute the blood with the tissue fluid and then the reading will be different. Secondly, we should also remember that as compared to the venous blood, the hemoglobin, the PCV, the red cell count is slightly higher in capillary blood and uh, that should be kept in mind. Also, the platelets, they are lower in case of skin puncture because they adhere to the puncture site and the platelet count is lower, somewhat lower. Also, the blood should not be collected from any cold cyanosed skin. Uh, if the patient is cold, uh, if there is cyanosis, it should not be collected from there because there is false elevation of hemoglobin or red cell counts. Okay, now going to the venous blood collection that is the main one we will firstly discuss in detail the method where it is very important to know each and every step because each and every step makes a difference. Now firstly uh, the uh, preferred veins. The preferred veins are veins from the anticubital fossa because they are easily accessible and they are uh, easily visible so that the puncture can be made. Now the rubber tourniquet is applied on the upper arm and this tourniquet it should not be so tight and it should not remain in this place for more than two minutes and then the patient after applying the tourniquet the patient is asked to make a fist so that the veins become prominent and they are palpable now the vini puncture site is cleansed with the ethanol and then you will uh, stretch the skin so that the uh, vein is secured now, 
the sterile disposable needles here lancet is not used here the needles or syringe should be used for vena puncture and the needle size is also specific it should be 19 to 21 gauze in adults and it is 23 gauze in the children now the puncture is made so that uh, such that the bevel of the needle is up and along the direction of the vein and the blood is withdrawn slowly now it should be remembered that the blood is withdrawn slowly because if you will pull the plunger of the syringe very quickly this will cause sudden uh, rush of the blood into the uh, syringe and it will cause the hemolysis and also the collapse of the vein now the tourniquet should be released as soon as the blood is flow is seen in the syringe now after that next step is after the required amount of blood you withdraw it now then a patient should open his fist and then the needle is withdrawn from the uh, vein and the sterile cotton gauze is put over there and then you will secure this with the help of a bandage now uh, and this was about the uh, uh, withdrawing of the blood now what happens is the needle uh, when it is detached from the syringe now uh, the required amount of blood this should be transferred into a tube now this tube you should remember how to uh, put it in a tube we should not uh, put the blood through the needle into the tube because this will cause hemolysis the needle should be removed and then the blood should be put into the tube and it should be put into the tube containing the appropriate anticoagulant we will not discuss anticoagulant in this video we will discuss in a separate video now the blood is mixed with the anticoagulant we will do gentle mixing by inverting the container many times now again it should not be shaken vigorously because it will cause again hemolysis we have to prevent hemolysis and in each every step hemolysis can take place and after use now for your own protection the disposable needles they should be put in a puncher proof container we should not try to recap it it will cause a needle stick injury uh, it should be put in a puncher proof container for proper disposal and then these tubes they should be labeled now and the labeling the time of collection should be mentioned the sample should be sent to the laboratory with a properly filled form so that the required test can be done also precautions now uh, let's discuss about some precautions which you should take while withdrawing the blood firstly the blood should never be collected from an intravenous intravenous line or the arm which is used from intravenous line because this will dilute the blood sample secondly the tourniquet should not be too tight or it should not be applied for more than two minutes as this will cause hemoconcentration the puncture site should be allowed to dry completely from the alcohol because it will again cause a variation in the results uh, the tourniquet should be released when we uh, see the blood in the meat uh, in the syringe because otherwise there will be hematoma formation in the patient and also we have already discussed that we have to avoid hemolysis so that the blood is uh, so for that we should withdraw the blood gradually and lastly for your own protection all the blood samples they should be uh, they are considered infectious and proper precautions should be taken lastly now this blood should be tested the anticoagulated blood should be tested within one to two hours of collection and if this is not possible by any uh, reason this sample should be stored in a refrigerator for around four to uh, at four to six degrees celsius for maximum of 24 hours some changes will be there but that can be explained now after the sample is taken out from the refrigerator this should be uh, allowed to return to the room temperature it should be mixed properly not vigorously a gentle mixing should be done and then it should be tested now this was all about the collection of the blood in the next video we will discuss in detail about the anticoagulants do like share and subscribe if you like these type of videos ask any queries regarding this topic in the comment box thanks for watching this video Thank <laughs> you.